Truth, lies, shenanigans. Okay. All right, let's delve into this never ending soap opera with Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, his wife Jenny, and now their billionaire friend, Harlan Crow. Of course, Clarence Thomas is the second black Supreme Court justice appointed by George H.W., Daddy, Daddy Bush. Now, we know he consistently sides with Republicans. He voted to overturn Roe v. Wade, even suggested explicitly that conservatives go after right, other rights like gay rights. But let's go over all the craziness with this dude. Of course, back in 1991, he was accused of sexual harassment by Anita Hill during his confirmation hearings. He's been criticized for never asking any questions during oral arguments. I mean, come on, if you're sitting on the highest court in the land, you should at least pretend not to be a conservative lapdog. And there's his wife, Jenny Thomas, leading up to the January 6th insurrection, sending text messages to Trump's staff about overturning the 2020 election. Then Thomas refused to recuse himself from cases involving his wife. In 2011, he failed to disclose his wife's income from her work with conservatives for 13 years. And now the big fuss is because he failed to disclose some financial transactions gifts from this guy, Arlen Crow apparently likes to buy historical or controversial properties, including a property previously owned by Nazis back in the day. And on top oh of that, one of those transactions Thomas failed to disclose is a family house that Crow bought from Thomas and Crow renovated, built up, put a lot of money into it. He continues to maintain the house, but Clarence Thomas's mom still lives there. So Crow basically bought, fixed up, and pays for all the expenses for Clarence Thomas's mom's house. He claims he's preserving history because, you know, he's the historical house of the first, the second, I'm sorry, the second black Supreme Court justice. <laughs> but I'm calling BS. Crow wasn't just buying a house. He was clearly buying himself a Supreme Court justice. So my question to you guys, what should be done about this and how can we hold people Hold these justices accountable, considering their place in lifetime offices. We start with Rob B. All right. Um, if a Supreme Court justice is found to have received luxury items and properties from a billionaire, it could be considered a violation of, of ethical standards and undermine the integrity of the judicial system. So there are know that there are specific procedures in place such as the judicial conduct and disability act in the u.s that allows for investigations and dis disciplinary proceedings against federal judges including supreme court justices yes clarence <laughs> so if the allegations are are uh, of impropriety are substantiated uh potential consequences could include censure reprimand or even re removal from office so if all of this is true i really think that he should be removed from his office and an investigation of his decisions should be started immediately. And if it can be demonstrated that specific decisions were bought, then they should be reviewed by the remaining justices. Clarence and Jenny gotta go. They are bad news for America. And Harlan Crow, any relation to Jim? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Jim Crow. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, Rob. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> that's good um, i mean my <laughs> simple you guys know how i feel about politics i think that we need to do a sweep and a re like bringing new people in but i think that when it comes to uh rep I, I think that what they should do honestly with clarence thomas's track record is to remove him from office that's mm -hmm. just i got to do something been. Yeah, it should have been done, it actually. Um, the problem is the, the chief process. justice. The chief justice is a conservative. And of course, okay. they want to keep those, uh, those conservative I votes. I, I mean, although John Roberts has been voting both ways, he's still considered a conservative. Go ahead, John. I just feel like we need change. Yeah, I, I feel like we need change. The way to get them um, to feel the consequences of their action is to remove them from office, take their title away from them, strip them of that. I just think giving fines or doing anything less than that is just 
almost childish. <laughs> I think that we need to strip them of their, I think we need to strip them of their title, honestly. Get people that are in there that are actually doing the right things for us. Because it's just been, if you guys haven't, in, in the, like, since maybe, I would say like 2020, 2021, it's just been one after the other with like politicians and leaders being exposed and all of these like criminal things that have been going on. I'm sure it's been going on, like I, I know, but I'm just saying once I've gotten of age to actually care about what's happening in our country and society, I've just noticed it's just been one after the other. It's been all types of exposing. Um, yeah. yeah, he got to go. It's ridiculous. I think I think the number one thing we gotta get some term limits in. I mean, I think mm. a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court is crazy to me. I mean, because that means that you know, just think about the last twenty years and how much social change has occurred in the last just twenty years. And yeah. someone sits in office um, who's I'm talking about gay rights, you know talking about um, civil rights. I mean, there is a lot that has changed just in the last 20 years alone. And so we have these conservative people. Thomas has been on there since, what, the, uh, the 80s, late, late 80s, early 80s, late 80s? He's been on the court. I mean, just think about how much has changed in our world since then. And... <laughs> He's going to be, he potentially could be on there another 20 years. And he's living in these antiquated times in his head of where the world is and where the world should be. And I mean, it's just, I think, I think we should have term limits like 10 years, 15 years. I think it should be longer than most. I'll give you longer than most, uh, you know, because, you know, again, there's always this checks and balances in, in place. But well, we've got to mm -hmm. get rid of some of these 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 people that have been around for forty years. People are like eighty nine. How in the hell are they even making reasonable decisions at this point? You know, I mean, so he probably still has his wits about him, but he doesn't care. All he's trying to do is get his billionaire friends to pay for everything for him, is, and he just votes however they you know they want him to. It's kind of ridiculous. Wait. Yeah. I mean, at this point, we all see that. And I agree with you, Neil. The term limits need to change. I didn't know it was a life appointed thing. See, I'm learning new things. I didn't know that. Yeah. So was. until he dies, yeah. okay. Yeah, man, it's life appointment. They, they, assume, like, you, they, that's the thing about the Trump appointments. The problem with the Trump appointments that we have is that he appointed all these really, really young people who are still, you uh -huh. know, conservative and they're living in these old times and they're going to be on the Supreme court for another 40, 50 years. Yeah. Cause yeah. I mean, they're like, no, I agree with the, with the terms and they should be longer terms given the office that they actually are serving. Uh, I can see, you know, like you were saying a decade maybe, and with the possibility of getting another term appointment. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Just because that's it. If they are serving the American people, then I don't see any problem with it. And if you do have terms, it gives you the opportunity to review, move things around a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. have a set number. Yeah. I don't have, you know, because I know Trump shoehorned a couple of his uh, justices in, and it's like, well, yeah, you, you did it for the sheer numbers of it so that you could get that legal traction behind your madness. Right. It, it, it's a system that needs to be revamped. It, it really needs some attention. Yeah. Serious, serious revamping. I'm, like I'm annoyed with this guy. I can't. I can't. Um, Uncle Tom. Jack, Uncle, did you call him Uncle Tom? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to say it out loud, but you heard me. <laughs> but, but you know, there's a... Uh, there's a slight, there's a different meaning to the actual Uncle Tom if you read the book, but I mean, it became a, a term. I mean, you know, our old Lizzie, Lizzie will tell you, she'll, she'll educate you. She <laughs> <It> will. <laughs> but um, Jacqueline Robinson says, Clarence is a bitter, self-loathing, grossly incompetent fool who's been waiting decades uh, to pay back those he believes have offended him. Ridiculous. Mm. She's right. George mm -hmm. Fournier, I didn't approve of his appointment uh, when he was dealing with the sexual misconduct allegations. I like him even less now. Yep. And, you know, he's just, like you say, I mean, 
the other version of the term Uncle Tom is probably very accurate. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the non-literal. <laughs> the non-literal, right. <laughs> All right, is this truth? Lies. Lies. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. This is shenanigans. America it's is horrible like shenanigans. Horrible. horrible shenanigans. We gotta get Again. rid of this guy. We gotta get rid of this guy. I mean, he's just... Yeah, he's a pariah.